if I was admitted to hospital with a pneumonia in the 1960s, the treatment would be antibiotics and supportive care. If I'm admitted today in 2019, the treatment would be antibiotics and supportive care. So been a, there's been a complete failure to develop alternative approaches for people with respiratory infections. Antibiotics are important, but we still have a 10 to 20% mortality for severe respiratory infections, and that's unacceptable. So we need to develop treatments that go beyond antibiotics that target the host response to infection. Prevention is absolutely key. So we already have some effective preventive measures like influenza and pneumococcal vaccination, but you look across Europe and the uptake of those interventions is not as high as it should be. And so again, we need to raise this up the, the agenda to say everybody, particularly those with chronic diseases like COPD, should be getting influenza and pneumococcal vaccination. We've seen great reductions in pneumococcal disease with childhood conjugate vaccine for pneumococcus. And so we need vaccine development for other respiratory pathogens in order to take advantage of these opportunities for prevention. There is this huge problem now with vaccines that some patients are getting misinformation on the internet or elsewhere that tell them that the flu vaccine causes flu or that other vaccines cause different diseases that's given vaccines a bad name. Vaccines actually are one of the most powerful interventions that have saved lives over the last 100 years. And we as health professionals, I think, need to be more vocal in saying just what an important thing vaccines are, how safe they are, uh, and how important it is that all patients who have the opportunity to be vaccinated are vaccinated. We've seen an explosion in the use of immunosuppressive drugs for various conditions, rheumatoid conditions, cancers, uh, other chronic conditions. And with that comes a cost, which is an increase in infections and an increase in uh, difficult to treat antibiotic resistant infections. We need to have more research into the impacts of these new treatments on the immune system and how that leads to respiratory infection and more education and training because I think lots of clinicians uh, are not so familiar with these new drugs that are being used and not necessarily aware that the, there are risks of respiratory infections associated with them. Mm -hmm.